Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, we're diving into a crucial and often misunderstood part of wrist fracture recovery, removing a wrist cast using a specialized cast saw. This might sound simple, but there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. If you've ever wondered how these casts are taken off safely, or if the thought of that buzzing saw makes you nervous, stick around. This video is for you. We're going to walk you through the entire process, debunk some myths, and show you exactly why this procedure is both safe and important. Let's get started. The importance of cast removal. So why is removing a cast such a big deal? After weeks of healing inside a protective cast, your wrist has likely mended, but the cast needs to come off in the right way to avoid any potential complications. The cast saw, a key tool in this process, is specially designed to cut through the hard shell of the cast without harming your skin. When done correctly, this step is not only safe, but also vital for allowing your wrist to begin the next phase of recovery, regaining strength and mobility. Understanding the cast saw, myths versus reality. Before we jump into the actual removal, let's address some common concerns and myths about the cast saw that might be lingering in your mind. 1. Oscillating motion, not rotation. The cast saw doesn't spin like a regular saw. Instead, it vibrates or oscillates. This motion is key because it allows the saw to slice through the cast without penetrating your skin. It's engineered to be safe, even though the buzzing noise can be a bit intimidating. 2. Skin safety. Many people fear that the cast saw will cut their skin. But here's the truth. The saw is specifically designed to be safe for your skin. It cuts through the hard plaster or fiberglass of the cast while gliding over the softer, more flexible skin. When handled by a professional, there's no need to worry. 3. The noise factor. Yes, the saw is loud. There's no denying that. But the noise is just part of how it operates and has nothing to do with safety. It's all about getting through that tough outer shell without harming you. Step by step, how the cast is removed. Now, let's get into the step-by-step -step process of removing a wrist cast with a cast saw. This is where the magic happens. One, preparation. The patient is comfortably seated with their arm supported. The healthcare provider ensures there's adequate lighting and examines the cast to plan where the cuts will be made. Typically, the cuts are made along the sides where the material is thinnest. Two, making the cut. The cast saw is powered on and the provider gently applies it along the predetermined cut lines. The trick is in applying just enough pressure, enough to slice through the cast without digging into the skin beneath. The saw's vibrating blade does the work and the provider moves slowly and carefully to ensure a smooth cut. Three, splitting the cast. Once the cuts are complete, a cast spreader is used to carefully pry the cast apart. This tool is designed to gently open the cast without putting undue stress on your wrist or skin. At this stage, the patient might feel some pressure, but it should not be painful. Four, final removal. The two halves of the cast are then lifted away, revealing your wrist. Any padding underneath is also removed, allowing the provider to inspect the skin and the wrist itself. Your wrist might look pale or feel stiff, which is completely normal after being immobilized for several weeks. Post-cast care, what comes next? With the cast removed, what's next? This is where your recovery really begins to accelerate. Caring for the skin. After weeks of being hidden away, the skin under the cast might be dry or flaky. It's important to gently cleanse and moisturize it, but avoid scrubbing too hard as the skin can be sensitive. Regaining movement. Your wrist will likely be stiff lately, so it's important to start gentle exercises to regain flexibility. Your healthcare provider may suggest specific exercises or physical therapy to help restore full strength and motion. This part of recovery is crucial for getting your wrist back to normal function. Monitoring for issues. Keep an eye on your wrist for any signs of swelling or discomfort. If anything seems off or if you experience persistent pain, it's important to reach out to your healthcare provider right away. Conclusion, and that's how you safely remove a wrist cast using a cast saw. It's a critical step in your recovery, allowing you to move forward and get back to your normal activities. I hope this video has eased any concerns you might have had about the process. If you found this content helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with others who might benefit from it, 
and subscribe to Dr. L. Maximo's channel for more orthopedic tips and recovery guides. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.